Yeah, man. Oh. Was it on Facebook? <coughs> yeah, man. Facebook Live, bitch. You ready to go live? I gotta see what I look like. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's very nice. What's going on with my hair? <laughs> Am I clicking here as well? Yeah, yeah. Ready? Yep. Ready? Hi everybody! We're going live on two different platforms here, so hello YouTube, hello Facebook, hello YouTube, hello Facebook. Do your intro. <laughs> <laughs> Do the things. Um, welcome everybody to a very special episode of Spider-Man the Animated Series Podcast, where we're doing a live stream on our Facebook page, Spider-Man the Animated Series Podcast, and also on Robson Inc., which is Will's YouTube channel. <laughs> so, just so hello webheads how's everybody doing hope you're having a good day we are here today to talk about something i've been wanting to do for a while which is the james cameron's spider-man movie that never got made that was fun it's like camera one camera yeah two, that's not going to work when we two. post it on the podcast no one's going to know what you're doing camera you one sound camera two sound though. like an idiot <laughs> they can pull it up on both channels and, and do it so what we're going to do is um Will's fiance Chloe is also here off camera because she's going to be a stand-in at one point for us for a particular character because the way this is working is I'm going to list all the facts about James Cameron's movie, about the Spider-Man movie he wanted to make, about the possible casting choices that he had, and I'll be able to share those with you guys through my phone and show you who they were thinking about with the names, um, along with some storyboards which I can share on the Facebook page and we can always try and, I don't know, turn the camera or maybe we'll just show it through the phone, actually. And uh, then we're going to get into some script readings because this script is, for the lack of a better term, fucking hilarious. I haven't read any of it, so I'm looking forward to it. So they're completely in the dark and I'm going to be, I suppose, I'll be the director of you two. Oh, and, and also, when he says two, my fiance Chloe is here as well. You already it? said that. Yeah, already Did said you? That, yeah. Along with my... Hello. I don't think... Actually, I'll do this for everyone on my YouTube. Mm. This is the dog that always snorts. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Say hello. Say hello on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> she's the one that's always snoring in my lap. And now she's going to snore in her mum's lap. Yes. Okay, um, so what I'll do is I'll list facts for you guys and go through the entire film about what James Cameron was planning, all the... Uh, the loopholes and all the things he had to go through and eventually why it didn't get made. I've got a huge list of facts here, as always. Now, is that still going live on Facebook now you've put that tab down? Yeah. Yep, yeah, cool. <laughs> Jeez. Just checking. No, that's true. That would have sucked, yeah. Okay. I'm your IT. So, what I'll do first is, like I said, I'll go through the facts with you guys. We can talk about it. Um, this film was going to be an R-rated Spider-Man film. So this is right after James Cameron. This was going to come out in 1995, I believe, this film. So soon after Spider-Man the Animated Series. That's the year you were born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this film was planned to be an R-rated Spider-Man film because James Cameron, obviously, had just come off Terminator 2. And wow, was that was like, going to be the previous film to leave. Was Who like, watches Terminator 2 and they're like, yeah. Spider-Man, yeah, that's a good role for that guy. Yeah, and then um, I think, actually no, True Lies came after, so it wasn't even True Lies. But obviously Arnold, James Cameron, there's even a role for Arnold in this film. No, there. <laughs> does it say, like, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger was, enters frame? I'll tell you right now, Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to be planned as Dr. Octopus. <gasps> what? Yeah. Oh my God. Can but you imagine? Instead he became Mr. Freeze. Instead the he became Mr. Freeze. The two German comic book characters. <laughs> so, um, Oh my god, him as Dr. Octopus would have been amazing. And then also, I know for a fact that Spider-Man, uh, James Cameron was heavily considering uh, what's-his-face from Titanic. Why can't I think of his name? Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. I could see that. Yep. In fact... In the 90s, yeah. I can show you that, and I'll always post this on... Facebook afterwards, but there's even a contest uh, concept art. Someone on YouTube says Terminator comes back in time to kill the spider that bites Peter Parker. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that's a way better plot. Um, oh, that's not loading. That's typical. So I'll show you on here. And I can even show you <laughs> Why is it not loading, Spider? Smythe, it's not loading. Dun dun dun! I saw it earlier. 
that is the poster that was planned for the film. It's very hard to see, I know, but that is James show Cameron's show on the Spider Man. Oh. So we've got Do Leonardo look? DiCaprio as Peter Parker. Wow, very Sp- McFarlane looking <laughs> yep. Spider Man. What is 95? Um, Mary, Mary Jane it was considered somebody. I'll have to look her up afterwards because, as usual, I've come into this completely unprepared, but we'll go along and we'll have some fun with it. But let me read out all the facts about what happened. So Spider-Man, which is what it was called, strangely enough, was planned but ultimately was fa- a fail film and to be directed by James Cameron in the mid-1990s. Several plot elements from Cameron's script were kept by David Kemp in his script for the 2002 Spider-Man film. And when we read some of this stuff today, you'll kind of see elements of how uh, Sam Raimi took similar tropes for what James Cameron was planning. Uh, This film was the reason that Spider-Man the Animated Series was not allowed to use Electro and Sandman because they are the two big villains. Now, what else has David Kep written? Do you know? I don't know, no. I have no idea. But you can Google it up. David Coep. Coep. Um... So, in 1990, Coralco Pictures originally bought the rights to Spider-Man from Manaheim Golan for $5 million oh and were God. planning a $50 million budget version of this film. Coralco then hired James Cameron to write, direct, produce, but Coralco wouldn't be paying uh, for Cameron's submitted script. So, Cameron had to produce the script by himself if he wanted this to be made. So, they were paying for his... Uh, production and directing, but they and they were paying him to write it, but he would have to sell the script ultimately to get it made. Do you want to hear what this guy has written? What? Pretty impressive. Jurassic Park. Uh, and he has uh, uh, stuff on the first Spider-Man film. I don't know if he actually wrote it. Um, well, that's what he was. He took David Kep is the guy that originally. Um, wrote the first Spider-Man film. And that's what he's saying. David Kep took tropes from James Cameron's Spider-Man Right, film. so he's got that. Mission yep. Impossible 1. Wow, the good one. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom whatever from 2008. The Lost World. Angels and Demons. Panic Room. Ghost Town. <laughs> Carlito's Way. Oh my God, the list goes on and on and on. This guy has, has worked. The 2017 Mummy film he wrote. Oh God. <laughs> Men in Black 3. Indiana Jones 5, 2020. What is this bullcrap? What is this picture here? Look. Whoa, they have a new Indiana Jones poster before it's even come out? 2020. This can't be real. That's going to come out. Yeah, there's a new there's a new indie film. Well, he's yeah. writing it. He wrote the last one, and the last one was terrible. No, no, but he, he did didn't. Write no, Park. Lucas wrote the last indie film. He's written, he's written all of them. It's not what it says here. Whatever. It's 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 Facebook. Okay, so I mean, it was... Google. It was... This was post-True Lies. I thought it was. So toward the end of shooting True Lies... Variety carried the announcement that Coralco Pictures had received a completed screenplay from James Cameron. This script bore the names of James Cameron, John Bracato, Ted Newson, Barry Cohen, and Joseph Gamari. I have no idea who these people are besides James Cameron. That is the dog snoring, by the way, if anybody really hears that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. It's so boring. <laughs> She's so. had a busy day. She's been out and about. Oh, my God. <laughs> Move her a bit. <laughs> put, her, put her so she's not in a snorty position. Okay, so Cameron wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he linked him to as his choice for Doctor Octopus, as I said. Months later, James Cameron submitted an undated 47-page scriptment, which we are going to read today. What's a scriptment? It's basically a treatment of the script. So it's got um, some pieces of dialogue for scenes, and then the rest of them is just then this happens in this scene, then this happens. So it's kind of okay. it's not a completed script. So it's, like it's just a whole basically story. Marvel method when it comes to writing scripts. Pretty much, but for I mean for comic scripts. Yep, the scriptment told the Spider-Man origin, which is another thing that the animated series was not allowed to do because of this film. The scriptment was meant as here's how Spider-Man becomes Spider-Man. Here's Electro. And here's Sandman, who are very different than their original incarnations, and it was going to tease Doctor Octopus, so it was going to show Arnold Schwarzenegger as just Otto Octavius. So, did they were they just trying to make the Sinister Six, but didn't follow through with all the heroes? They just took like the Sinister Three, possibly. That's very possible. Or they may be setting it up for another film, and then the final film would have been all of them together. It, that that probably would have eventually. They probably tried to do a little mini Marvel Spider Man universe before they eventually failed. I'm sure they probably pretty bold to have three villains on their first film, right? Like think of the films that came out before that. They were you know Batman eighty nine, 
Batman Returns had two, but yeah, other from that. Yeah, but that's a sequel. I'm talking about for a first, first film. film. And to do the origin of the hero, and then the origins of two villains, and also set up Doctor Octopus for another film. That sounds like really A lot convoluted. of work, yeah. So, the scriptman told the origin of Spider-Man and used variations on the comic book characters Electro and Sandman. This Electro, who is not called Electro, his name is just Carlton Strand... He is essentially okay. he is essentially the kingpin mixed with Electro. Really? So he's like this weird like crime boss that uses his powers to become the kingpin of New York, but he's Electro. But he's not called Electro, he's not called Kingpin, he's called Carlton Strauss. That's a weird combination. Yep. Um, and his name was also not Max Dillon, like the normal Electro is. Uh, then we've got, instead of Flint Marco's character, Cameron's Sandman, simply named Boyd. Never called Sandman. Boyd. Just called Boyd. So what is this, um, because you, if you watch, like, they never really call, uh, Bucky Barnes the Winter Soldier, or maybe they do, but there's, there's certain characters in films you see nowadays where you know they're that bad guy, but they don't call them that name. You just know it's them. You just, yeah. I'm trying to think of examples of that. Like, it, like that, because when you think of the opposite of that, like Punisher Warzone, when he's like, from now on, you call me Jigsaw. Well, they it's even like, did Zemo, did not referring to Zemo, didn't they? No, they called him Zemo. They just didn't call him Baron Von Zemo. True. And that, to me, I, I love that film, but that, that was one thing that bugged me, because I love Baron Von Zemo, the character. I need the mask and the sword. Um, so... To no con- comment on that? All right. <laughs> to, con- <laughs> <laughs> to continue on, no, I agree, they did, they did Zemo poorly. I still love that film, though. Um, so to continue on, after I said he's just named Boyd and he's mutated by an accident involving uh, Philadelphia experiment style biolocation and atom mixing. So trying to be way too technical with the origin of Sandman. Just use some fucking sand and some sort of technology <laughs> to create him. I don't know why they did that. Um, and the story's climax was a battle atop the World Trade Center. Oh. Well, I mean, the World Trade Center then... Wasn't there a scene in the Sam Raimi one and it got, it got cut, cut out? It was in the trailer, yeah. I remember the trailer where he made the web in between both Twin Towers. Yeah, during a helicopter heist scene. Yes, and it catches the helicopter. Yeah. Sandman versus Anakin um, from Nathan DC Marvel. Um, so we've got, uh, to continue on, we also had a sex scene on the top of Brooklyn Bridge between Spider-Man and Mary Jane. That's crazy. <laughs> which we will be reading and you two will take over oh, for those roles. Uh, this treatment reflected elements in previous scripts from Leslie Stevens' treatment. It had organic web shooters, so they stuck yeah, with that so for that's... Sam Raimi's. Right. I never minded that, to be honest. I mean, I like, obviously, I think the... You've got web... to have web shooters. Yes, I think the web shooters help with, with causing conflict for the character, where, oh no, I'm low on web shooters, or, oh no, they're not working. Right. But I remember as a kid, I, I loved the organic uh, stuff. And then um, this script involves the villain's main plot, um, Electro, because I'm not going to call him fucking whatever the stupid name was, Carlton Strand. Electro's main plot was to convince Spider-Man to become part of his sort of mutant crime gang, where he's like, you are better off as an ally for me than you are a villain. Join me and we can rule New York well, City. That's what the that's Green, what Goblin, Green Goblin wanted yeah. to do. So it's very similar to Sam Raimi's, but obviously Sam Raimi did a much better job than this. Uh, and You this... like that film, don't you? What? We, we watched, Sam Raimi's we watched Spider-Man. All three of, yeah, all three of us watched that yeah. about three or four months ago. It's my, that's my childhood Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good film. I re- <laughs> re-watching I was like, oh, this is going to be we rubbish. We watched it as a joke, and we actually came out of it like, that was a pretty good <laughs> yeah. film. <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, I'll watch that again. <laughs> um, so the reason, I've got it here... Um, the reason it started to fall through is when James Cameron agreed to make Spider-Man, Karalko lawyers simply used his previous Terminator 2 contract as a template. A clause in this agreement gave Cameron the right to decide on the movie and advertising credits, show business trade articles, advertisements, um, and it made no mention of Golan, which is part of the, um, the production team behind it, who was still actively assembling the elements of this film. So in 1993, Golan complained publicly and finally instigated legal action against Coralco for disavowing his contractual guarantee credit as a producer. So this guy, Golan, wanted to produce it. He was producing it, but he was never credited, never mentioned. Mm. And James Cameron started to take more and more away from Golan. And he was just like, hang on, I'm, I own this shit. What are you doing? Was um, A.V. Arad involved in any of this? Not that I've read at all. Okay. And neither was Stan Lee. 
Well, this is just like we've sold the rights to go make a big movie. Yes, exactly. This is soon after he sold the rights. Uh, Stan Lee sold the rights. Sold the rights. Sold the rights. <laughs> um, so eventually, Carolco sued Viacom and Columbia to recover broadcast and home video rights, and the two studios countersued each other, and there was just massive lawsuit after lawsuit. James Cameron was in the middle. He wanted to make this film, but the two production companies were basically bashing heads, and it just just collapsed mm. um and it was going to get made it's not like he submitted what well, I, I think it's a pretty shitty script or treatment but it was it, at that time he was so hot that james cameron could have done anything he did was this t- terminator terminator 2 true lies i mean he was untouchable so if he made this film would do you think titanic would have ever been made because is that the next project that he did that's true it was yeah Ooh. that's well it would have been made just with a different main actor what do you mean, director? James Cameron directed Titanic? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Because oh, Leonardo she... DiCaprio is the main guy in it. Yeah, but we're talking about... Do you these... think James Cameron loves Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, and this was going to be the first film that he worked on him because he saw him in uh, Gilbert Grape. Oh, okay. And loved him and was like, this kid's going to be a fucking star. Yeah. Don't you think that he would have chose the kid from Terminator 2 to be Spider-Man? Like, that's not a bad choice. You Funny you say that because it's in there. He was second choice, and I think he would have been better because he, he had... Or he Harry had the, Osborne. Yeah, but I think he would have been a great Peter Parker because he had the attitude. Mm-hmm. He had that sort of sense of, I am I can be a smart kid, but I'm also a cocky kid. Yeah. And I think he... he, he when you hear him, when he's like, um, you're calling moi a dickhead, just yeah, the way he acted. Way better than Leo Lay, Way choice. better, yeah. But Leo was... Leo would have been a good Harry Osborne, actually. Leo would have been a good Harry Osborne. Um, so, as I said, I won't go into the massive uh, legal battle because it's just more and more jargon and more and more fights, but it completely dissolved and destroyed it. Uh, and then in 1999, after all of this mess finally settled, Marvel licensed Spider-Man rights to Columbia, a subsidiary of Sony Pictures Entertainment, and MGM disputed the legality, claiming it had those Spider-Man rights via canon. 21st Century uh, got involved, and then that's how Sam Raimi's... Tobey Maguire Spider-Man film was born so let's go through the casting choice here and I will pull it up I don't need to show you Leonardo DiCaprio you know what he looks like he was going to be Peter Parker Spider-Man Maggie Smith was going to be Aunt May do you know do you know Maggie you must know who Maggie Smith is who's Maggie Smith Maggie Smith the way I I mean she is huge in she's Professor McGonagall oh my god his sweet little Aunt May yep that's amazing casting. <laughs> she's also in Hook. Oh, Peter. She's, uh, yeah. she's Wendy in Hook. That's how I originally know her. I could see her being like, Peter, you need to get my groceries. <laughs> is she Wendy in Hook? I think I just fucked that up. <laughs> you know what? I Oh, yeah, she is Wendy in Hook. Yeah. So there's there's Aunt May. She would have been amazing. Whoa, she looks so much younger there. Yeah. Anybody watching, that's Aunt May. God, that's really blurry, that's really isn't it? It's just eyes and a... Just Google Maggie Smith. <laughs> yeah, Google Maggie Smith. Just Professor McGonagall. We've yeah. got uh, Robin. 90, just Google nineties Professor McGonagall. <laughs> We've got. She should have like a Nirvana t-shirt on. And... Robin Lively as Mary Jane. Who at first I was like, who's Robin Lively? And I kind of looked through. There's things she was in the Karate Kid. She was uh, see a, a love of interest. Her? I think as a teenager, that's a pretty good Mary Jane. They just chose someone who has red hair. Yeah. yeah. So I think she would have been a great Mary Jane. Meh. Um, no. She's just got red hair. I'd never seen her in anything, so I don't know. <laughs> who, who, um, what other popular actresses around the nineties? Oh, uh, what's the girl from um, Friends? What, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, I think she would have been a good Mary Jane. Really? Was she young enough at the time? Because Peter Parker's yeah, in high 95? school. Yeah, ninety five. She's in high. He's no, in high school. Oh, this is a high school She's, film. Isn't she like in her fifties now? Or like late? He's a 40s? senior in high school in this. Oh, this okay. Movie. I thought this. I didn't know. Yeah, if she was in high too school. old at the yeah. time. Um, I don't know any child actors right. from the 90s. This is the one I've been really oh, excited yes. I'm to very, I'm very good at that topic. I know all about child actors, specifically from the 1990s. I find it a bit weird if you were. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I'm going... This is this is definitely for you. I've been waiting to show you this. J. Jonah Jameson was going to be Ar- oh my God! Arlie Ermey. Um, the guy too. from... Um... Look how JJ he is. Oh my god, yeah. That's for people listening. Full metal jacket. Full metal jacket. You could suck a golf ball for a garden hose. Yep. And just, I can see him at the Daily Bugle. 
and he's been in Texas Chainsaw oh, Massacre. A, he's a very good choice for J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. So some good casting. So yeah, some really good casting. When I saw that, I was like, oh my god. Except for Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Octopus. So Michael Bean was going to be Boyd Sandman. Michael Bean is sort of James Cameron's go-to guy as well. He is uh, in Terminator 1. He is the guy that um, travels back in time I've and ends up... I've seen Terminator 1. Oh, my God. I know. Right. I was supposed to watch it this weekend. Who's Michael Bean? Right. I'll show you Michael Bean. He's been in... <laughs> Mr. He, Bean, you know. With he's, the been in, uh, he's been in Navy Seals. Um, I'm trying to spell it Oh, my it God. Correctly. You used to love that film as a kid. I fucking still love that film, mate. <laughs> When's the last time you watched Navy Seals? Not for a while, actually. I would happily get drunk and watch that with you one day. We're doing it tonight! <laughs> <laughs> right. Michael hey. Bean. You know Michael... <laughs> <laughs> you know Michael Bean from Tombstone? Okay. Um, and he's also... Let me see a picture a, of him in I know, Tombstone. these are terrible photos. There's Michael Bean. He was going to be Sandman. Do you recognise him? Vaguely. I know you've seen him. Uh, yes, I, I He's do. the one that verses Val Kilmer in Tombstone, the one that, like, his rival. Yeah. And he's like, I, I'm your Huckleberry. That was a terrible impression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your Huckleberry. I can be your Huckleberry if you want me to. Uh, but yeah, he's known for Terminator. Oh, obviously Aliens. He's in the sequel to Alien. He's one of the soldiers in that that lasts for a long time. Uh, and numerous other roles. So he was going to be Sandman or Boyd, because they can't fucking get that right. Boyd. Also, Boyd. another Alien actor um, that James Cameron was bringing off. And obviously that was another huge film that James Cameron had in his belt when he came to do this. I haven't seen those films since I was like a kid. So oh like, man, I, I need to rewatch those. Aliens films. really. Hard I'm to going watch. through right now like old, slightly horror movies like Alien. I just watched The Thing for the first time. I know, it's crazy. I need to watch Terminator, I'm, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to keep going with them. I don't think anyone's watching us on Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> How many people like us on Facebook? Like fucking twenty. No, oh, I'm glad we like set 60. it up. Yeah, we've got that too. It doesn't matter. We still got it going, don't we? Um, so this is... You're terrible at advertising. This is... <laughs> it's your one job. <laughs> you you fucked up, Smythe. Your art page or something. Oh, that's better. Oh, it's fine. It's going through my YouTube. Hi, yeah. YouTube. I'm sorry if I'm missing comments. So this is... Uh, this guy was going to be um, Electro. Do you recognise him? No. So... I'm trying to find him a better picture. Maybe you don't recognise him. But he was in Hard Target. I don't know if you remember that film. Aliens. He's in The Terminator as well. I mean... James Cameron worked with this guy a lot. He was also in Aliens vs. Predator, and he was the guy, Wayland. Terrible that, film. Yeah, but he was the one that led them all there because he wanted to solve his... Because he was old and he was dying, and he thought there was a way for him to right. uh, live eternally. They've got to make a good Aliens vs. Predator movie one day, right? That's right, Bob. The best Alien vs. Predator thing I've ever seen was that Judge Dredd vs. Aliens vs. Predator comic. How good was that book? That was fucking amazing. Every, uh, anybody listening, go get that book from, I think it's, uh, who makes it? Was it IDW or somebody like that? Anyway, or Dark Horse. Go Dark get Horse. that book. Yeah, that was really, a really, really book. fun ride. Art's very Frank Miller in Dark Knight Returns as well. Yeah, four issues and it's a complete story and you just go, this was made for a movie. This yeah. Film. Uh, you, you, this book. It, it was way better than it deserved to be. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so, oh, these are really small, but I'll read this. So, and obviously, to, oh my God. to finish, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Otto Octavius, Dr. Octopus, which would have just been amazing. It would have been jokes. I can't, you know what? Imagine you said... him, he's supposed to be a super smart scientist. Well, then again, now I'm thinking like, Mr. Freeze. so was Mr. Freeze. Yeah. I, it would have just been octopus puns the whole time. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to turn you into fried calamari. That's squid. <laughs> Isn't that the same thing as... Squid and octopus are different. They're different things. It's still funny, though. Right? I get the joke. <laughs> tickle you with me. Give me, give me I'm some... I'm going more. to tickle you with my tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> is, that really, <laughs> is that really an octopus pun, though? No, I suppose not. How, what's an octopus pun? Do you think he pun? would be obsessed with, like, the number eight as well? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've lost... You've got no puns, you, do you? Hang on. Do spiders have eight legs? <clears throat> yes. Yes? Yeah. Hey, Spider-Man! You have eight legs, so do I! Let's fight! <laughs> would have been something like that. Oh, I think we just missed a comment, which would have been funny, because I'm sure someone had a better pun than we did. Why don't you load up um, YouTube on your phone, turn it on, turn the volume down, and then look at the comments. Okay. What okay. do you call two octopuses that look exactly the same? Identical. Oh! <laughs> I like that. Can we have more of those? Because I want to just do... What do you them? call two octopuses that look the same? Identical! 
Jesus, you're like Arnold Schwarzenegger on crack. <laughs> it's the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's doing it. How do you make an octopus laugh? You tickle his tentacles. <laughs> you give it ten tickles. Ah, <laughs> that's quite sweet. <laughs> Little tentacles. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so the plot points here that I wanted to share with you. No genetically altered spider, but flies. And the flies were genetically altered in this movie. And when Peter... Now, this is the same writer as Jurassic Park. No, that's... You're confusing that. Oh. that This is James Cameron writing this movie. David Kett then took James Cameron's script, took pieces of it that he liked, and put it into the Sam Raimi film. Got it, got it. Okay, so James Cameron wrote all this. So... It was genetically altered flies, Mm -hmm. and when they went to, um, I think it was, it was probably Oscorp or something like that, I believe I read that in the script, one of the flies escaped and got caught in a spider's web, the spider sucked the blood of the fly, and then dropped down and bit Peter. That's such a convoluted way. Why would you do that? I know. Why? Why would you do that? I know. Why would you just have genetically altered spiders, which they did in Sam Raimi's film? Oh, Chloe's got some YouTube comments. Brain Gamer said, hey, what's up? Who did? Brain Gamer. Hey, Brain Gamer. Is it Brian or Brain? Hey, Brain Gamer. Brain. I've been calling him Brian for so long. (laughs) (laughs) Suddenly, suddenly the the people watching goes down one less. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then, what killed the It did! (laughs) Fuck! (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit! Um, And then, Nathan DC Marvel said, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! The Ice Age! (laughs) Love it. it. The octopuses. Um, (laughs) So, (laughs) so there was no wrestling career for Spider Man in this, where he obviously started as a wrestler and then Uncle Ben was killed and he became a superhero. Spider Man starts as a street performer and works his way up to public access television before he becomes a superhero. Oh, God. Yep, so there's a whole story of that in this script as well. So we don't get any Macho Man Randy Savage. Bone stars ready. None of that. Uh, Peter is horrified by the organic <laughs> web hole. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that was me choking on my Randy Savage impersonation. Uh, Peter is horrified. Yeah! <laughs> so, it's not like the Kool-Aid man. That's what it's the pretty Kool-Aid much man Randy Savage, does. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, come get some. Um, so Peter is horrified by the organic web holes in his arm, and I pulled this script scene. Oh, Jesus! He, he actually, he considers himself a freak. And he sits in the corner of his room in a fetal position, crying. Oh my he's god! So, he's so upset about these disgusting holes in his arms that produce web. And when he just he's like, oh, <laughs> you're not far off. No way. You are not far off. Fucking hell. He actually wakes up and it's like a wet dream. No. Oh, Let's yeah. read some. Just wait. <laughs> just wait. We'll get there. Oh, taking ages to bloody get there. I'm ready to read. So Peter invents fake web shooters to hide the holes on his wrist. And this wants... is so convoluted. And he wants people to think he's invented the webs and not physically creating them. Someone... Just give him fucking web shooters Someone, then. Someone has created all of these problems for the script that were, that were not needed. It's ridiculous. Um... Peter discovers his organic web shooters in bed after basically having a wet dream, which we'll read. Peter re- <laughs> Peter researches... I mean, that would make Spider-Man, every time he fights crime, he's like... He's coming. Yeah, he's constantly having orgasms. Like, you know those people that have orgasms, like, 90 times a day? Yeah. He's just like... That's why he fights crime. He's like, crime? Oh! 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 Please steal that, please. Thank you! Oh! Uh. <laughs> he's a sex freak. So, Peter... Also, researches spiders to understand his new abilities and becomes a real spider expert. So he literally... What, like a day? <laughs> I guess so, in a day. He studies them, loves them so much, where he's just like, if I'm a spider, I've got to know everything about them. And then incorporates that into his sex scene with Mary Jane. Oh, I cannot wait to read this. Um, Peter is from Maryland in this story. He's not even from New York. Why? I don't know. He originally comes from Maryland. <laughs> and then moves to New York. Where's Why? It, I feel Where like... is Maryland? Maryland. Uh, Maryland is... It's like mid... It's like central northeast, if that makes any sense at all. So basically, it's it's past New Jersey, past Delaware, and right after Delaware is Maryland. It's like the boring bit of America. No, it's not so much. Actually, Maryland's really nice, and their fucking crabs are amazing. Um, but no point for Spider-Man to be from bloody Maryland. There's absolutely. I feel like no so. This is the type of stuff when 
a screenwriter. Well, actually, it's James Cameron, isn't it? Mm. Is James Cameron from Maryland? Does he have an association with it? Don't know. Could be. All that type of stuff you see that people chuck in the scripts is them, like you know, what everyone says, write what you know. Mm. That's that's what I see there is just chucking in stuff like that. So someone, um, someone in the stream, find out if James Cameron's from Maryland. You don't so, have to wait. You can read. <laughs> well, uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm waiting. Wait. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to finish. So uh, Spider Man gets his powers. Powers. Uh, oh no, no, not, not Spider Man. I apologize. This is Electro. Electro gets his powers whilst being a small time crook, and he's in Mexico and he's being chased by the police. And he comes across an electric power plant, and there's a massive storm and a tornado, and it hits the power plant, and suddenly he has powers. Like there's no sort of experiment involved in this he's just literally running from the police and then hits this electric power plant there's okay. a there's a storm that hits and he comes out and he's got super electric powers for no reason it's really weird that's really dumb yep uh what else we got here before we move on to and not as i mean just as good as what happened in the amazing spider-man 2 though <laughs> yep then There's it, a big tank of electric eels, and I'm going to fall in them. James Cameron said he wanted Electro... I mean, I'm sorry, he wanted Sandman, or Boyd, in this script, to be exactly like the T-1000, the, obviously, in Terminator 2. Yeah. He wanted him to have the exact same morphing abilities and be a direct rip-off of that. How does, what does that have to do with electric powers? No, that's for Sandman, mate. Oh, Sandman. Yep. Sorry. I'm drinking a very strong gin and tonic. <laughs> And then finally, Cameron said, if Fox would have just spent a couple extra hundred thousand dollars, just a couple, uh, they would have had a two billion dollar franchise on their hands with all the things he was planning to do for the Spider-Man films to come. And he finally said they blew it. Really? I think you fucking blew it, James Cameron. Right. They found out where James Cameron's from. Oh, yeah? James Cameron's from Canada in, Mm. I can't say this. Capoose casing? What? Capoose. I don't know. James Cameron from Canada in uh, Capus casing. That's what it sounds like to me. Okay. I am going to... You have your scripts, Ooh, yes? let's read. Let's read our scripts. So we are going to read excerpts that I picked that I thought were too fucking good not to read from the James Cameron script treatment, the Spider-Man film that was never made. Do we have them up? Yes. Yeah, hang on. Sneak peek just for YouTube. There's there's the colours for the Turtles cover we did. Show Facebook. There you go, Facebook. You see that? Do you know when that's coming out? Um, May 26th, I think. You can cut that out of the recording of the podcast. I just thought I'd show that. Anyway. Right. <laughs> okay, so I've broken this down into multiple parts of the script to kind of get a full idea of the story, and each segment is listed. So you see, obviously, we've got intro, we've got power discovery. Yeah. So we'll go through each one. Now, we've got the intro, which is just Spider-Man doing a voiceover. Talking to Bruce. Who would like to be Spider-Man? Well, if you're going to read, you're going to have to get closer to the mic. I'll just talk loudly. Yeah, you have to talk very loudly. Mm. Shall I do... So who's Spider-Man to begin with? You can do Spider-Man to begin with. Do right. Spider-Man. What right. voice should I do for Spider-Man? Um, anybody got any suggestions? Or should... <clears throat> this sounds like Spider-Man after Flashpoint happens. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I could do Spider-Man as Gilbert Lee. <laughs> Alright, do Spider-Man as Gilbert I'm probably going <clears> to <throat> cough doing that. Jesus we'll have a Christ. Go. Okay, so I'll do the you intro. My fiancé doesn't listen to the podcast at all, so she, you have no idea all the sounds I'm about to make. Yeah. Alright, so... I'll do the intro. We've got... You ready? Yeah. Okay, we've got the intro to James Cameron's Spider-Man film. The figure is hanging like a spider... (laughs) From a... (laughs) I don't know why that cracks me up. (laughs) From a radio mast high above Manhattan. What's with all the dot dots in his his, uh, writing? I don't know. There are familiar landmarks. Pan Am and Chrysler Building, Empire State. Chrysler Buildings, it says here. Multiple Chrysler Buildings. The figure talks... Is this me? Yep. Welcome to one of my favorite night spots. The service is slow, but the thing I like about it, dot, 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 it's not usually too crowded. The Empire State Building is lower than us, so there's only one piece, uh, one place we could be. 
1,400 feet above the street, on the radio mast at the North Tower of the World Trade Center. A quarter of a mile below us, the traffic moves like corpsicles. What the fuck is that? Of light <laughs> through the circulatory system of the city. Thank you. You alright over there? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you could do such a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Right. You, you know this as the parrot from Aladdin, Aladdin don't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I know him from reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, oh yes, he, re- oh. he read it as an audio book. <laughs> That's amazing and gross. I can read that in this voice. All right, no, so, all right, so the figure then talks. It all looks so dot, 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 civilised, dot, 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 from up here, doesn't it? Like there's some kind of logic to it all. It's all so clear. But you get down there on the street, and nothing's clear. The street. Cabs and cops. People on the move. Humanity in all its variegated glory. From stockbrokers to hookers. Priests to junkies. Oh, every Spider-Man film these hookers, priests <laughs> and junkies in that order. A corner newsstand. Pushing in on a stack of Newsweek. Close on the top one. The cover is a grainy, long... Lens, black and white shot, like a UFO photo of a guy in tights, apparently crawling up the side of a building. The headline reads, The Spider-Man, hero or vigilante? An arm wearing red spandex and a red glove drops down from the roof of the newsstand. The news guy whirls as the arm slaps two bucks on the counter and grabs a Newsweek. The owner rushes out the door, looks on the top of the kiosk. There's nothing there. He looks up all around. He grins and holds his fists in the air. Owner... All right! Cut to the figure. Atop the World Trade Center, still hanging, he pulls the Newsweek out of his belt and stares at the cover in the moonlight. Spider-Man. How can I expect them to get it? I don't even get it. I'm confused. No, it doesn't say that. I do wish they'd at least get my name right. It's Gilbert Grape! (laughs) Oh, it's it's not Gilbert Grape, is it? (laughs) I always say Gilbert Grape. It's Spider-Man! Dot, 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 dot. The Spider-Man! Jeez! Boneheads! I need a better publicist! <laughs> he rips the magazine easily in half, then in quarters, then in eights. He's taken that much time! Wow. Fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. Perfect squares. <laughs> Somewhere he realises that he takes more strength in the hands than you or I have. He realises the stamp size shreds, or he releases the stamp shi- sized shreds. Camera drifts with them as they flutter down over the city like confetti. Wouldn't they have kittens if they knew Spider-Man wasn't even a man? Just a kid named dot dot dot. Peter! Close up on an elderly la- lady yelling. That's Maggie, uh, That's Maggie Smith. Smith. <laughs> Peter! Peter, you're going to be late. It's morning. Oh, I'm not sorry to read that. <laughs> it's morning and she's calling up the stairs to Peter Parker, age it's 17. It's morning. <laughs> Peter is in the bathroom, popping a zit in the mirror. Oh, oh. oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> Just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. <laughs> Even young superheroes get zits. He puts on his glasses and checks his look in the mirror. Still the same. Nerdy. He doesn't care. Screw him. Oh, that sounds like another writer right now. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to go on to power discovery when Peter discovers that he has superpowers. Okay. Okay. This <clears throat> is the bed scene. Oh, yeah. I will show you storyboards as well from this. There's storyboards There's of the sex scene? There's storyboards as well. No, not the sex scene, the bed scene where oh. he discovers he has powers. The next, so, the next day, tight on Peter as he wakes up. He opens his eyes cautiously, not knowing what to expect. Pull back to reveal that he's still in bed. All is normal. He breathes a sigh of relief. In fact, he feels pretty good. Lots of ah. energy. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls back. And something is causing the sheet to stick to him. He lifts it, revealing a sticky white mass completely covering, gluing him to his bedding. It is some silky substance webbing into the covers. He He cries out in dismay, struggling to free himself from the gluey strands. Where did it all come from? He notices his wrists. They are oozing a pearlescent white fluid Jesus, this is very from almost written. invisible slits from a quarter of an inch long. Oh, I know, this is like God. literally fucking Fifty Shades of Grey talk. He pushes in on the skin next to one of the slits and a dark shape the size and colour of a rose thorn emerges from beneath the skin. What? It shoots a jet of liquid silk <laughs> into his face. <laughs> wow! Peter screams at the top of his lungs. Wow! Aunt May comes to the door. Peter, 
Are you all right? Yes. He oh, answers he, nervously. Nervously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that, that, that fine, aren't they? I was just uh, practicing for school play. Oh, I'm so happy that you're getting into other activities. <laughs> right, do you want to see... Um, that was really, some really awkward. From that. Uh, isn't that fucking awkward? Right, that let's that look at some... was like Spider-Man fan fiction. Yeah. Like, that was great. Yeah, it was like that, yeah. yeah. Oh, guys, I've just realised, I'm so sorry because I've got a new laptop and because I don't have Microsoft Word and I saved all the images on Microsoft Word. I'll have to share the storyboards on Facebook and share with Oh, don't laptop. worry, that's fine. But they are hilarious because they are literally showing him discovering, like, the first time he had a wet dream. It's really weird. That is insane that they, com- like, combine those two. Okay. We are now going to do an Electro reveal where the first time Electro meets Spider-Man. <clears throat> I'm going to blow out my voice by tomorrow if I can. Well, I'll take over for Spider-Man. I'll do... I don't know. I don't know what voice I can do, but I'll do something if you want. I can keep reading. I might switch up the voice. Right. Electro reveal. We reveal the figure in the chair. This is Carlton Strand. He is in his early 40s and exudes power from every pore. He is wearing a very expensive custom tailored suit. His hair is slicked back. Very GQ. His nails are manicured. All right. Great detail. <laughs> His watch is platinum. He's like, yeah, bitch. He is the image of vast wealth attained and not inherited. Because anybody that has a platinum watch and has a, a Manny Petty is yeah. loaded. Do you think he's got like acrylic nails, like the really long ones? Like a <laughs> oh. Are you ready, Spider Man? Yeah. Um, I'm going to switch the voice to the Kingpin. Okay. Carlton Strand, you think Trump was big? Let's Ooh. stop there. Isn't that crazy? Oh, oh my god! They were referencing Trump, where he's being like, "You think Trump was a vast, uh, wealthy person? He's got nothing in Carlton Strand." This guy was bigger, just like my three chins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> there he was, sitting like a big fat spider, just like me, spider, <laughs> at the center of his web of power and mega box, just like me, spider. <laughs> <laughs> And way out on the edge, he feels this little vibration. Spider-Man, continue. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise it split. But he wasn't always Carlton Strand anymore, Smythe. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep this up. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't Carlton Strand anymore, then I was always your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. At one time, he was just a punk named Carl, dot, dot, dot. A two-time loser about to go down for the third time unnecessary long space in the text <laughs> it was about 10 years ago that strand got his cosmic tap on the shoulder and then they will cut to the mexico scene that's so fucking boring i didn't include it in okay here. actually i'll keep uh, to make it um keep continuity i'll keep gilbert what's his face for okay Spider-Man. <clears throat> right new york interviews we're going to do this plain talk because be careful I cannot believe how Oh my god, fucking... I just see the name of the characters. How I'm African-American New Yorker, Latino New Yorker. The racism stereotype is nuts oh my in this. God. And it's just pure 90s, like, fucking unbelievable. So this is a New York interviews, where they are interviewing New Yorkers about the appearance of Spider-Man. So, at the same time, in some neighbourhoods, he is a local legend. Crime is down, and the friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man is a welcome sight. And everybody wants to claim him. Black kids think he's black. White kids think he's white. Italians say he's Italian. Gay guys think he's gay. Hispanics, etc. <laughs> just just et everybody thinks... He's like, I'm done typing this sentence. You get the gist. Fucking nuts, right? African-American New Yorker. This is... I'm going to say it as plain as day. Spider-Man ain't no white dude. He too down. What I'm saying... You see his moves? He definitely a brother. Wow. Wow. Latino New Yorker. No way, Holmes. Oh my my brother knows a guy that talked to him once, man. Cool story, bro. <laughs> Great fucking story, dude. Okay. Uh, I, I do... We're, we're going to do the Mary Jane attack, and then we're going to go on to the love scene, where okay. Chloe can come in. For the love scene, I would like Chloe to play Spider-Man, and for you to play Mary Jane. That makes sense. Okay. All right, so before we do that, the Mary Jane attack. I had to put this in, because this is ridiculous. Do you, Spider-Man, you ready for this? Yep. Okay. On Mary Jane walking home, she's being followed by some punks. They accost her. There is no one around to help. I know. Just say they attack her. She screams and they drag her off the street into an abandoned junkyard. Suddenly, Spider-Man is there. He trounces the attackers. This happens in the actual Spider-Man Sam It does. Yeah, you're right. 
He trances the attackers and webs them up. He knows by now that without crime actually taking place, the cops won't even hold these guys. So all he can do is warn them. I'm sorry, who uses a cost and trances? I know. After seeing all of his other Wanky James writing, Cameron does. I feel like he just googled like synonyms for other words. <laughs> yeah. Like when you write an essay at school. Um, <clears throat> okay. If you worthless chunks of vomit show your faces around here again, I'll decorate my Christmas tree with your... <laughs> Alright, you gotta stop with, with your intestines, got it? <laughs> so Spider-Man I'm a smoker! Spider-Man's telling villains he's going to decorate his Christmas tree with their intestines. Yeah, because Spider-Man loves killing people and stringing yeah. them up. Because Spider-Man's the Punisher in this story. Yeah, that is a very Punisher line. Yeah. Alright. You worthless chunks of vomit show. Yeah, it's yeah. more like that. Yep. Okay, love scene, you ready? Oh yeah. Okay, Chloe, you got it? I, th- I yeah. think the voice I'm going to switch to is a very Florabama style. <laughs> yes! My name's Mary Jane. <laughs> I don't know I Mary Jane do. Watson, face it, You've tiger. got lots of you great You just lines. hit the jackpot. <laughs> the crackpot. I don't know what voice I should do. It's going, oh, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. So laughs> Make sure you're loud. Okay. Um... Punisher and Spider-Man had a baby, and it's James Cameron Spider-Man, is what Nathan <laughs> just said. Absolutely. All right. Cut to the Brooklyn Bridge. A stunning aerial shot. Oh, it's my favorite bridge. <laughs> <laughs> a tiny shape swinging in an arc, racing past the support cables, sweeps towards us. It is Spidey, with MJ in his arms. Oh, he's so strong. He shoots another web strand, swings to one of the stone towers, and races up the side. She is light as a feather in his arms. She screams like a kid riding Colossus. A wee! <laughs> <laughs> a wee, I'm having such a good time. They pass us. Her screams continue, fading as he carries her up to the wee. dizzling heights above us. <laughs> On the top of the bridge tower, hold a beat. We hear screams approaching. Spidey appears and sets her on terra firma. I don't know what the fuck What's that is. What's that mean? Do you know what that means? I don't, I don't know, know what terra firma mean. is. No. All right, Bubby, you're snoring way too loudly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Go on. <laughs> wakey, wakey. <laughs> she, cling- she clings to him, looking down and around in wonder. He has put the world at her feet. She can't believe this is happening to her. I'm so swooned. In a dizzying down angle, we see how the suspension cables all meet radially at the top of the tower, like the treads of some vast spider web. Oh, I see what he did there. Oh, you know what voice you should do? You should do your, like, 1950s gangster voice. Like, meh, meh. Like, I don't know if I can speak like You can that. You can courtship among the spiders. Okay, I'll do that. Peter, Just try whatever. Peter and MJ seem to sit at the very centre of the web, surrounded by the lights of the city. It is a warm spring night, and the moment is pure magic. She stands with her back against a girder, needing to feel something solid. Oh, I'll show you something solid in a minute. <laughs> Spider-Man stands before her, a perfectly formed male, silhouette with a soothing low voice. Now, hang on, before we go, I will say that um, not very good that they're saying Spider-Man without the hyphen in between Spider and Man. That's a big no-no already. That's true. Oh, your YouTube's reconnecting. Oop. Oh, dear. YouTube down. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, we're back Sorry on YouTube. That. Um... Right, let's hear from soothing voice, deep tone. Do whatever voice you like, Plot. Just yeah. make it loud. Make it loud. Courtship among the spiders is highly ritualized. It varies from species to species. The male spider may circle the female Ow. or wave his front legs Ooh. to signal that he is not prey. You're so knowledgeable about spiders. I'm so impressed. <laughs> Spider-Man moves in a hypnotic arc around her. He raises his hands in a dance-like movement and lowers them. The female usually signals her willingness by uncharacteristic passivity. Passivity? I think it's just passivity. <laughs> passivity. Yeah, but honestly, oh what a wanker. MJ takes a deep breath. Her lip trembles. Her knees are weak. Her eyes, though, are steady. Gazing at the silhouette before her, she doesn't move or speak. He moves closer. In certain crab spiders, <laughs> such as... Don't worry about Azistus. that name. Azistus. Azistus. 
The male will attach strands of silk to the female, tying her limbs. He's now getting into BDSM, guys, this with his like webbing. Serious bondage shit. This <laughs> is like this is fan fiction. Oh, in like <laughs> a porno sense. And this is written by James Cameron. Well, he's not a writer; he's a bloody director. Spider-Man moves his hand gracefully across her, and she sees the sheerest silk webbing glinting in the moonlight. Oh. She plays with it and, and sucks on a bit of it. No! no. <laughs> that is not in the script. First the right wrist, then the other. Hypnotic movement in the moonlight. Her arms are bound to the wall. Her breathing gets more rapid. Wait, so she, she's webbed up against the wall, so she's against her will? Uh, she this is seems... a bit fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Can you read that? Because I've just realised the text is all fucked up. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Since the female can break free at any time... The bonds have only symbolic significance. Well, that, that answers my question, yeah. then. Just to let you know that I'm not actually about to rape you. <laughs> you do have a choice. So fucked up. Mary Jane, here you go. Okay, this is my first line of dialogue. <laughs> Wait, she was, hang on. So she knows, like, about spiders as she well? She suddenly is, like, into this game, yeah. So I... This is not in the script, but so I read up as well. <laughs> and then, there we go. <laughs> I was paying for this BDSM <laughs> spider sex. The male must be very bold. To take such liberties with the predatory female. Ooh, I'm going to get you. Yes, he is very bold. But he must also trust her. He moves very close. (laughs) Close your eyes. Oh, they're close. He removes his mask and kisses her. Their mouths are very slowly and very sensuously (laughs) devour each other. (laughs) Peter and MJ are locked together. Oh, just like two dogs in heat. (laughs) (laughs) He is mesmerizing, gentle and powerful. How can you be gentle and powerful? I don't know. That's some straight porn writing. And then suddenly writing. we change from like gentle, sensual, and he goes, he pushes up her skirt. They make love high above the World Trade Center. She doesn't look. She doesn't look. She doesn't what does look. That mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I guess she doesn't. Oh, high above the world. So she doesn't look down as she's getting shagged oh. on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. What, she doesn't want to see if he's But imagine dick. seeing Spider-Man being like, ooh, and puts his hand up her skirt, and then seeing them <laughs> shag like, as it, like, pans back. Sorry, that was one of the most fucked up things I've ever read. That was going to be in a movie. Just like him, like, did you know about these certain arachnids? But it's just weird how it goes from that, and it's like, and they fucked. And that's yeah. It. I can't believe she was like, I've read up on this. <laughs> I've studied the, the sexual patterns of spiders. <laughs> and I'm quite aroused. I feel like you're going to get a strike on your YouTube channel because of this. Probably. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. All right. Now we're going to move on to the foul language segment, which is obviously there's no Spider-Man film without foul language because it's got to be R-rated for a reason. Of course. Strand moves without warning, grabbing Mary Jane before Peter can pull her away. She feels the current running through her. Peter lunges forward and Strand turns up the juice. Mary Jane cries out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Peter stops. He can only watch helplessly as Strand toys with their life. Strand grabs her and kisses her. The Ooh. voltage makes her hair shoot straight out. She starts doing the Watusi. I don't know what the fuck the Do Watusi. The Watusi. <laughs> <laughs> it's the spider dance he was doing on the yeah. Brooklyn Bridge. Strand. <laughs> I'm going to come up with the voice of Strand now. Just... How long is it going for? I have no idea. To um, Smythe. <laughs> but sir okay we're good <laughs> there you go that's how you get in the character yeah. but sir no I'm smart see her power turns women on he breaks the kiss she slaps the shit out of him and he kisses her again <laughs> this time at a much higher voltage MJ starts to convulse wildly <laughs> meanwhile Sandman is dissolved and is flowing across the floor he reforms behind Peter and grabs in a grip of solid rock Peter struggles as Strand electrocutes Mary Jane. She bucks and goes still. (laughs) Her head falls back and Peter sees her staring eyes, pupils fixed and dilated, dead as they come. Peter can only stare in horror. Strand. Help me spell the man. Mm. (laughs) Strand. Mm. What should we do? Call 911. Peter. You can just do Gilbert Lee for that. I'll kill you, motherfucker! You hear me? You're dead, you sick bastard! Spider-Man just called someone a motherfucker. Well, I'm not surprised with this, like, hey, you slime punk in the other Punisher line. <laughs> Ready for this great scene between Mary Jane and Spider-Man, you two? Oh, yeah. 
On the roof of the tower, Spider-Man gets MJ to the stairwell door. He rips it off its hinges and he tells her to run. She sta- she starts down, then turns back to him. I love you. Cool. <laughs> What? So do you think they had an Empire Strikes Back moment where they're like, I love you, I know, and James Cameron's like, I'm going to fucking do that too. I'm going to have Mary Jane go, I love you, and Spider-Man just be like, cool. Yeah. That was their that was their Empire moment. Definitely. All right, we're going to go to... Really, now, that's it? Just a coup? Cool? <laughs> Not a cool whip? We're going to go now to the end scenes of both Sam and Electro. I don't think there's any dialogue for the Sam. So did you read this Electra. whole script and choose the I best I read bits? this whole fucking script. <laughs> fucking <laughs> hell. In fact, unfortunately, there are no Schwarzenegger lines because I looked for the Dr. Oh, Octopus. Okay. There's a scene where it just describes Peter going to see Dr. Oct- or Otto Octavius and there's no lines. Okay. And it just says like they, they talk gave about Arnold this. zero lines. Yeah. <laughs> we loved you in Terminator when you didn't say Well, remember, it's only a script treatment so it's yeah. not the full script. Um... End of Sandman. Spidey sees that Strand is about to fire again. He fires a web at Sandman, lassoing him. Just as Strand unleashes a bolt, Spidey drops over the edge, pulling the web taut, jerking Sandman, screaming, right into the path of the lightning beam. The furious bright plasma wraps over the Sandman, fusing him into molten glass. So basically, Electro is the it kills Sandman accidentally yeah. and turns him into glass. I actually thought it was kind of a cool way. Like, the electric current turns the sand into glass. And but Sandman... can electricity turn sand into glass? Yeah. True. Fire does. I mean, it's the heat, so it could work, yeah. maybe. I mean, yeah. fucking hell, it's not the biggest plot hole of this whole script, is it? It's fine. Sandman is a smoking lump of melted glass in the vague form of a man, poised, cooling in a position of agony. Like Michelangelo's dying slave, his glass mouth is a shapeless pit of eternal pain. Wow, that was deep. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> what is this wanky shit? Why did he say that and then go bummer? Like, is he trying to be like... He was trend- like, oh, sorry, that was way too deep. Uh, <laughs> bummer, bro. Bummer, bro. Uh, sucks to be you, bro. <laughs> End of Electro. Holding. Jerking him just to, to a stop. <laughs> From 100 miles an hour to zero in one second. Wow, that's a false wank. (laughs) And Strand rockets past him, still falling. Peter holds the web with all his might, so they're falling through the air right now. Stopping Strand so suddenly as he slams into the steel columns along the side of the building with a sickening smack. The lightning stops suddenly. A few stray arcs as Strand's broken body dangles at the end of Peter's line. The sound of sirens wafts up from the street far below. Wafts up like a bad fart. (laughs) I can smell the sirens. Strand is bleeding badly and broken inside. Dying. Peter's mask is ripped off uh, by the fight. He pulls it off his head, showing his face to Strand for the first time. Strand. What's your name, kid? Parker! Peter Parker! Peter Parker. So... What are you? Senior in high school? Yeah, I graduate next week. <laughs> Strand chuckles weakly, coughing blood from ruptured lungs. <coughs> Unbelievable. Strand dies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the, the end of the villain is literally being like, what are you, just a kid? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Fuck. Unbelievable. <laughs> but I'm dead. <laughs> and Spider-Man just killed someone, by the way. Just killed a villain. Peace! <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Spider-Man still hanging. This is the end of the film. Spider-Man? Where am I? Oh, okay, that's his dialogue? Yep. Mary Jane and I got accepted to different colleges. Wouldn't you know it? But we see each other every weekend. Her grades are better than mine. <clears throat> Little break. <laughs> it's hard to keep that voice up. But I blame it on the heavy hours. It's not easy being your friendly neighbor in Spider-Man. Takes it out of you. Well, it's a school night. Gotta fly. Be good. (laughs) He pushes off from the mast, swinging an arc out over the edge of the roof. Paying out web line, he drops like an express elevator towards the street far below. Tilting down to follow as he becomes a black dot above the sea of lights. A tiny spider going home. The end. Oh, God. Can you fucking believe this script? Like, uh, this is why I've been dying to show you because I can't believe this actually existed. And if you Do read you the think... whole script, it just gets worse and worse. I did leave out a scene because it was funny, but also really strange. Not that these weren't. Where Electro likes to play with women by electrocuting them to death and then bringing them back to life. That's how he gets off. Like, he hires prostitutes 
he had this one woman working for him that was basically a prostitute. Sex wasn't cutting it anymore, so he would accidentally. This sounds like, like Black Mirror. He would accidentally he would accidentally kill her by like shocking her, and then he would bring her back to life by doing you know kind of like the fucking clear, but he would use his electric powers. To that do only it. works when your heart's still beating though. Yeah. And he would love to do it. Like, he, he did it for kicks. Like, I'm going to kill you and bring you back That's to life. So That's how I get off, because I'm Electro. That's bloody ridiculous. That's yep. so fucked up. Oh, man. What have we got here? Fifty Shades of Webbing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, when Spider-Man says in the animated series, when getting Venom, ha- he's developed more than a backbone. I really hope he didn't mean this. Yeah, no shit. Um, so, I, I just can't believe... That a studio... I mean, I, I understand James Cameron, right? He comes from The Aliens, Terminator, yeah, but did he, True Lies. Did he write any of that? I've told you, that script is James Cameron's script treatment. Yes, but I'm ta- you're talking about the other stuff. Oh, well, well, the other films? Yeah. I have no idea. He, he could have had... Is this him maybe... Because what I... I'm just assuming this, but I assume that he is like, yeah, I made Terminator 1 and 2. Did he make one? Uh, he did make one, yes. I made Terminator 1 and 2, and maybe he was like, you know what? Screw other people's scripts, I'm going to try and write it myself. And this was like his first attempt? Let's find out. Terminator 2, who was it written by? I somehow have a feeling it was not written by James Cameron. It was. Fuck me, it was. <laughs> it's a good film. And, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how he didn't oh get my it God. right. Uh, now I want to read the script for Terminator 2 and see if it's as wanky as that. What with his descriptions and scenes? Mm. Yeah, I just I, like, I I hello there, my dear reader. <laughs> when I when I read more and more about this film, and understood how it almost got made and then fell through, I was thinking, James Cameron, Spider Man, Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah, all those names involved. I was like, this sounds like a fucking awesome film. Yeah, I watched it. So I was really disappointed. Then I read the script and I was like, thank fuck, this film was never made. Yeah, well, actually, can you imagine how amazing would it be? To see? <laughs> The sex do you think scene. It, do you think it would be like mm. The Room, where it's a film that is so hated that it ends up becoming a cult classic? Yeah. Where people are like, the best Spider Man film is James Cameron's Tommy, like, Tommy Wiseau is Peter fic. Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Arachnids? Oh my god. Spiders! <laughs> he's not a spider, he's not. <laughs> oh, hi, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Mary. <laughs> I didn't fuck her on the Brooklyn Bridge. I did not. <laughs> I just... You're tearing me apart, Mary! <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over this fucking film. And um, people have made... like, There's been storyboards that have been released that I'll share with you guys afterwards. And then yeah, I'll post them, them on Facebook. Facebook. I definitely will. Um, but people have made posters to this. People have actually drawn out scenes from this film because it is... Hey, please tell me there's some sex scene drawn out somewhere. <laughs> there is. Oh, literally. Oh, we got to take a look at that. Yeah. There's, you're like, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> I'll put it in my private collection. for later. <laughs> yeah, you can draw it. That's next. my next project with yeah. Marvel. Yeah. It's, it's the James, James Cameron, Cameron Spider-Man, Spider-Man film. Um, but yeah, that is... That, if, if, Marvel, if I got an email from Marvel and they're like, with like, James Cameron question mark? And they're like, hey, we got the script. Would you want to draw it? They're like, fuck, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. What was? What do you think was the most outrageous part of that script? The sex. The sex scene, yeah. Oh, yeah. It Absolutely. wasn't the sex. It was the lead up to the sex. And how grossly weird it was but also I feel like James Cameron was very sexually frustrated when he wrote that oh he was going through a divorce <laughs> there you go there you go wow oh I didn't even think about lot. that I so, think James Cameron is secretly like really kinky that's oh. why he wrote all this shit uh, yeah. like he does a little dance around I'm the window so, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of it was messed up the the uh, wet dream web shooter stuff was crazy. Maybe it was based on personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, and then that electro that. scene that we didn't read that you described, that's it's just insane. It's just so weird. It sounds I mean, like he was sleeping with a lot of prostitutes. And I, I, and I, actually, I actually thought about doing the whole script and I was like, no, that's just too much and it's going to be yeah. too convoluted. But there is so much in it where I was like, fucking hell, this is insane. Well, maybe we'll do a part two much further down the this line. This was a literal script that studios had gone... Yeah, we'll put fifty million dollars into this. Wow! Oh yeah, but, I mean, a guy that just came off of T one and T two, you would pump money. Into <laughs> uh, Nate Brown said, "Tommy Wiseau is Uncle Ben." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, hi, Peter. With great power comes great responsibility, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be married to Maggie Smith. 
<laughs> They'd be having some weird sex as well. Oh, God. Yeah, I just, the sex scene is so bizarre because it would be like taking Batman and he's like, when bats leave the yeah. cave, they like to eat their faces of their victims before they shag them. It's just fucking weird. Also, <laughs> is he not wearing an all-in-one suit? Oh, yeah, so how did he do, how how do, did do the he deed? In the unitard. Well, he's got like, super he's strength. Wearing, like... He's got super strength. You just rip the material off. But that means that I'm... But that's, just that's, an in the, that's an in-the-moment thing, right? Where you're like, oh, yeah. And you're like, rip it off. And you're like, oh, yeah. And, and then when, when he's done, he's going to be like, ah. <laughs> so, no, but... And she could just whip it back up. Done. Oh, yeah, you could whip it. Yeah. <laughs> Problem solved. I was going to say, he'd be swinging through the streets of New York. And you just see this silhouette and this dick and balls. <laughs> and, and then, like, one of the black or Hispanic guys, they're like, oh, he is white. <laughs> <laughs> he circumcised the Jewish guy's like he's one of us <laughs> <laughs> fuck oh me my god. oh my god get over how just weird this whole film is that is so true but like if he took the suit off did he keep the mask on no because he reveals to MJ that he's Peter towards the end of the film so she shagged a guy in a costume she had not no knowing who, who he, he is she was just like, oh, he's manly and he loves spiders. I'm down to fuck. So <laughs> DTF, DTF on the Brooklyn Bridge. But that's how Mary Jane is in the film. Is the Brooklyn well. Bridge She's not like, very busy? She doesn't care who Spider-Man is. <laughs> the Brooklyn Bridge is really like, busy. Full of cars and shit. <laughs> People are just like, what the fuck? Like, in rush hour. They just like, see some guy like, going like this. <laughs> it's like 5.30pm, everyone's coming back from work. Like. Oh, fuck me. They're like, he's doing the spider dance. Did you know the spiders before they made? That's so fucking weird. And just changing the names. So you're introducing Spider-Man to the general population for the first time on film, right? There's never been a Spider-Man on film before this. And you are naming the villains Boyd and Carlton Strand. Could you imagine that being people's first uh, exposure to Spider-Man? And just be like, who's, Parents. who's Sandman? You mean Boyd. Parents like, no. would be like... I cannot let my children read any of this. Exactly. It, would, it could really jeopardise the it could actual... could have ruined Spider-Man. I, I don't know what... Yeah, but for actual Marvel comic Spider-Man Yeah, as well. it could have destroyed it. Because or, what audience is this film meant for besides, like, horny, horny like, 30-year-old white men that do pervy <laughs> shit? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Why did you point at him? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? He's a 30-year-old white man. <laughs> yeah, but he's yeah, a but horny 30-year-old I wasn't in the 90s. 31. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Cutthroat. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know what audience this was meant for. I don't know how Spider-Man fans that could go see this film would be. But like, imagine if it was done popular. right. Character is done right. Imagine if it was popular and then it influenced the comics and the comics took all these dark turns in it as well. True. It'd be insane. It's really fucking weird, man. I just, I can't get all over. I can't get all over. I can't get. I can't over. get all over. I can't get over all of just the weird storytelling and just even the opening where he's just like hi guys i'm hanging out i'm gonna go see on a newspaper i'm doing this like stereotypical spider-man voiceover where he's just like they got it all wrong so i felt like the but beginning again, a lot of elements were kept in the same room thing he, he's like he did the voiceover know who i am yeah i'm your friendly neighborhood spider-man and that was also like i mean tom mcguire is probably one of the most cringiest white men in the Amazing. world that's why we love him it's just yeah. it's, it's just <laughs> i, <know, laughs> I kind of uh, I kind of want to watch people everywhere. That's why we love them. I kind of want to watch Spider Man Two tonight because I kind of miss. I've been dying to watch that, and every now and then she's like, "I could watch that." Let's watch Spider Man Two tonight. You know what I felt about the beginning of that script was that it sounded very like Joker esque. It was very like, "Oh, they see the world and they all think they know what they're doing, but they really that's true." It sounded really like. Yeah, like, I'm the only one that sees the world for what it really yeah. is, and it's chaos, and it's... Well, well the way to be fair, that sounds like a 16-year-old child. That's that true, does yeah. sound like a 16-year-old boy, that's true. I just, I can't get over just the wanky writing in this, too, where James Cameron's so like, what big words can I use this to just exposition spew all over these pages? Yeah. And then he uses words like, bummer. Yeah, and then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, then he punches the shit out of him. You're like, so many dot, dot, dots as well. I know so many dot dot dots. To be fair, I write a lot of dot dot dots in my scripts. Yeah, you don't say dot 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 when you're doing the lines, by the way. <laughs> I know, but I know you that. Just I did. Take a pause. You, know, <laughs> you know I did that on purpose to I know, I know you how did. many dot dot dots there were. I know were. you did. It's fucking insane. And, and I also, it's imagine doing a film where it's the first Batman film and you've got Jack Nicholson as a Joker, but instead of calling him the Joker, you're going to call him Jack Napier. You're yeah. like, I'm just going to give him a normal name. It's really fucking weird. And He's... Batman's talking to Kim Basinger about but in a sense, bats mating rituals before they <laughs> I mean, do the deed. I mean, you'd see the characters and know who they are. 
But it is weird, yeah. It's fucking weird. And there's also, oh, by the way, there's a scene. There's another scene I forgot. This is in the uh, storyboards, which I'll share. There's a scene where uh, after Peter wakes up and he discovers that he's creamed the sheets with his webs, <laughs> he's fucking, he like, it's sticking, the sheets are sticking to him and he's pulling it off and he's crying and he can't believe what's going on. And he has a freak out moment. He's crying. And then he, 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 he's so freaked out, he jumps out of his bedroom window Lands on the street, a car almost hits him, and he jumps up over the car. Guess the car wasn't like, oh, that's weird, because they just kept on driving. He yeah, lands what? in a tree, and he starts perving on Mary Jane through her window. Oh, for oh God. Sake. Well, he pervs on Mary Jane in the actual film as well. That's true, he does watch her. A lot, a lot of stuff you say happens oh my God. in the Sam Raimi I've film. never thought about how pervy Tobey Maguire is. Oh, he's big time. time to be his window is... You remember when he was, like, on his camera, and he was, like, focusing on her in the film? Oh, yeah. He's meant to be taking pictures of the lab, and he just kept, like, looking at her through the and camera. She, and she says some line, like, oh, I hope you get my good side. And he's like, every side is your good side. Or something like, like oh. that. Oh, it's really creepy it's like a really bad animated series where he's like it's cold out i'll keep you warm yeah yeah it's really fucking weird anyway so for all those that were listening live i hope you enjoyed it this episode will also go up on our uh, normal audio channels um do you want to chat about the film anyway the dog farted is that what you're <laughs> she's out do you want to chat about anything uh coming up oh, oh i have yes. a comic-con um <laughs> I have a Comic Con next week, uh, Medway Screen and Film Comic Con. So Google that shiz. Um, and I'll... <laughs> what are you, James Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be there uh, along with Art Adams, who's amazing, um, and a bunch of other people that have been in film and, and stuff. Me. So... And you. Oh, yeah, uh, Medway. You'll get to meet Spider Man in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. And Mary Jane. <laughs> Medway Screen and Comic Con. All right, cool. Yeah. Chloe, you want anything? Welcome to the show. You want to plug anything? You want to plug anything? Uh, I don't have anything to plug. If anyone's suffering domestic abuse, call me. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this script, probably. To clear that up, she works in domestic abuse. <laughs> 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 Not just like, I'm really interested in your problems. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Alright, guys. Well, that's all the time we got for this week. We're going to have a episode going up later this week. We interviewed Nate Stockman, who's a Marvel artist. It was far more put together and organised than this thing that we did today. But we'll have two episodes going up this week on the channel. Um, the interview with Nate was really cool. I enjoyed yeah, doing that. Yeah, good fun. It was good fun. Uh, until next time, I've been Alex Robson. I've been Will Robson. I've been Chloe Gilbert. <laughs> Soon to be Chloe Robson. Yes. And remember, with a great podcast comes great recordability. Goodbye. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm an old man.